Welcome to a very windy Ascension Island. I've just entered Fort Thornton, one of the sites of the, the original permanent fortification here in Ascension in the South Atlantic. So there are, there are three main forts that we're going to explore in this video. Fort Thornton, Fort Hayes on the other side of the harbour, and then we have the site of the original cottage battery and a later Second World War battery up on top of uh, the hill above the town. An incredible privilege to be here, and it would be, it would be absolutely a shame if I didn't share it and try and record some of these sites with you. So join me in this video around the forts of Ascension Island. Here at Fort Thornton, I'm currently standing on the roof of the, the original mid-19th uh, century blockhouse. Uh, the height was reduced, um, presumably to reduce the footprint to make it less of a target um, from sea attack. Um, around the walls of the battery, we can see that we have a number of quick-firing gun positions. These covered the bays uh, to the north and the south of the battery with the main armament sitting right at the tip. It sits above a subterranean magazine, uh, as many of these batteries do, to protect the, the shells uh, and the cartridges. And in this video we're going to take a look at, um, at exploring some of, those, some of those original features. So we're going to descend now into the magazine at Fort Thornton. So cast concrete steps and walls down the passage into the... First of all we have this, this small entranceway. Um, it's a combined... Well, it's not really combined but it's a single entrance into the shell store and the cartridge store so it may be that this is where the shifting lobby was um, or what i think may be maybe more correct is that this this raised raised ramp uh, that acted as a little bit of a flood barrier uh, when it rains which isn't very often um, i believe it is a it's of biblical proportions so that may indeed have been to stop rain and moisture and water getting into the magazine. So the first room we enter into is the shell store. So this is where the shells um, would have been on racks. And indeed we can see uh, some witness marks in the concrete of the floor where the shells may have been. Some nice features remaining, these are the lamp recesses. So as we can see, these are rather unusually lockable. Um, and the, the lantern, which would most likely have been oil, um, would have been placed in there and the light uh, would come out behind a pane of glass 
um, to, to give light to the workers uh, handling the shells. So the shells would have exited here. It's, on, it's likely that it been loaded, um, loaded through this area. Um, they would have come down, uh, would have come down into this space, probably with a with a davit or a, 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 a um, sort of a block and pulley system um, to load the shells down here before they would have come into the shell store. Uh, they would have exited via this shell lift. So while the the machinery has has been removed, there would have been a, a mechanical shell lift here made up of of chains, um, wooden paddles and a hand crank. Shells would have been placed upright in the bottom of the lift and then um, taken all the way upwards to the gun. Uh, it's also likely a, a certain amount of ammunition would have been kept at ground level for ready use uh, and then that ammunition would have been replenished from the shell store. Looking at the construction of this, while the entrance way was, was of cast concrete, in here some of the main structure appears to have been quarried uh, volcanic stones, these large, these large blocks, you can see the, the seam there, the seam there, um, have probably been quarried from some of the, uh, some of the more suitable stone from the island. Um, but there is there is cast concrete on the pretty much on the outer walls, so just the inner walls. As we leave the shell store, uh, we have another couple of lamp recesses here. We come into this area, and this is now coming into the cartridge store. So now that I'm seeing it, actually where I'm standing, probably acted as the shifting lobby. So this is where the where the magazine workers would have changed from there. Uh, from the contaminated outside clothes into into non-sparking uh, inside uh, magazine clothes, and here we are into the cartridge store. So a few differences about the cartridge store. First of all, we have the lamp recesses, but these lamp recesses are accessed from the outside. That's so no naked flame was brought into the magazine. Um, the risk of accidental explosion would have been too great. So these were loaded from the lighting passage outside. And we'll have a look at that once we leave this room. We have plenty of ventilation again. We also have a, have a door leading into a, a second room. So it was this room that was the uh, cartridge lift. So here we have a slightly larger aperture in the wall, but Equally, it goes up to ground level, and this is where the cartridges would have been loaded horizontally on a lift, and they would have been hoisted up to the gun. Um, it's unclear whether this is a second room at the moment. It may just may just be to reduce the risk if the if the lift fails, um, if the if the battery's under attack, perhaps, then um, and some of the charges in the lift accidentally ignite. It's just a, an extra barrier between here and the, the store of ammunition next door. And we have some more, more lamp recesses. Um, all made, you can see the green patina, um, all made of a non-sparking material, um, probably brass. Um, and that's, yeah, just to, to reduce the, 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 the risk of, um, of sparks and accidental ignition some some legacy items down here and, and there's if we look lower, we have a famous ascension island land crab that has unfortunately met its demise some long time ago we can see this wall it's made of of cast concrete we can see the formwork uh, witness marks but then if we go down to the far wall we can see some of that ascension stone which has been which has been carved so that's the shells uh, sorry the cartridge store and the only other thing to show you would be the, the lighting passage 
So right down here is this narrow corridor behind the cartridge store. And here on the left we have those recesses where the lamps could be could be set in to light the store without without bringing that naked flame actually into the into the magazine. And that was us where the cartridge lift was. So that was the magazine that, um, of this particular battery, uh, serving serving a single gun upstairs. Rather small and modest, but indeed very fit for purpose. <laughs> magazine but originally this would have been the ground floor of the stone block house at Fort Thornton. We're currently in the, the centre of three rooms all with vaulted ceilings and as I say there would have been a second story above um, but that was demolished in the early 20th century when the fortifications were upgraded Presumably, actually, because it presented too much of a target uh, from the sea as it sat above the parapet. So the purpose of, of this uh, blockhouse when it was built uh, was to um, act as protected accommodation for the troops. It was a defended building so they could fight off uh, land attack if the fort was going to be overrun. Um, it also served as water storage and it served as the magazine for the guns on the battery. So as we come into this first room, um, it serves two purposes. So if we look in the floor below us, we have a cistern. So fresh water uh, would have been pumped down from Green Mountain and stored in that cistern to help help supply the troops who were garrisoned in the fort. It then also seems to have been modified for ammunition storage. So we have some of the, uh, the later brass surrounds for the lamp recesses that we see in the later magazine. Um, but other than that, I'm not sure what this room would have been used for when it was when it was in service. Uh, we have two two vents up here at roof height, uh, and we have what I can only imagine was the water pump. So there would have been a, a manual a manual pump to withdraw water from the cistern below. The most interesting part of this structure I believe is in here and to the left as you come in the main door um, and I believe this was part of the original magazine. So there are a number of, of clues where I think this may be the case. So we have a reduced height door here which goes into a second chamber. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, there are some, some planks attached to the wall um, which may have been for uh, for a shelf, for the, I believe this was possibly the shell store uh, because it's more easily accessible. The floor itself is evidence that there was the bitumen covering on the floor that would have helped pre prevent sparks, especially if you're storing um, large steel shells here. We have the ventilation for air, um, 
at the top as well. And actually a really, really nice feature is the, um, the wooden laths, I think they're called, where the, um, the sort of cement render was applied uh, to, give the, to render this wall. Right, but if we come, if we step down into this small room, there are a few features to point out. First of all, at this end, we see the lamp recess, which looks as if it's been, been retrofitted uh, later, possibly during the later use. This filled in hole in the wall, which corresponds to a hole in that central chamber. This, I believe, would have been the issuing hatch. This is where the cartridges uh, would have been issued. The floor itself, we can see um, that the, there's a distinct floor line here. I believe there would have been a wooden floor um, fitted to this room and that would have allowed airflow underneath the floor to keep the powder of the cartridges dry. Now all of this, all of this black bitumen we see on the floor, actually if we look at the door we can see that this bitumen actually covered the floor above and it has, as it's softened uh, through the years, through the hundred of years, um, it's actually flowed down. So this is, this is a spill of that bitumen that would have covered the, the floor up here. So I believe that was the shell store and this was the cartridge store. Still with its wooden door frame. So making our way back out again. We come into this main room and we can see at the far end there's the what I believe was the issuing hatch, which has been blocked up at a later stage. And as well as a lot of the uh, later graffiti that we see around here, there are some signs that give us a, a purpose. So we have SA, possibly small arms um, ammunition or standard ammunition would at once have been stored in here whether at the original stage when it was a blockhouse or, um, or as, as part of the early 20th century upgrade. So we have SA ammunition and we also have QAF, so quick firing ammunition. So to support the quick firing guns around the edge of the fort. So a lovely little, lovely little relic to the original the original fortification, um, or the original substantial fortification on Ascension Island. So now coming what I think was the laboratory, so the ammunition testing laboratory of the fort. With some large sockets in the wall, uh, which may have been for a bench to work on the ammunition and same on this side, possibly for storage. Here there's been a lot of erosion, so we can see the, the very coarse uh, cement that's been made using, using that local beach sand mixed in with some, some volcanic stone as well, possibly made with seawater, which is why it's, it's crumbling so quickly. A small room uh, or building in the centre of the fort, um, just by the magazine. Uh, this is. This is reasonably common in uh, early, mid 19th century forts because of the, the volatility of the propellant, because of the susceptibility to damp. Um, the, the, both the shells, explosive fill would need to be inspected as well as the, the propellant charges. And this, this building is, is probably where, where that was done. Uh, we can also see on the floor it had the the bitumous uh, covering to help help minimise and reduce sparks, which is very commonly found in explosive working buildings.
here we have one of these quick firing emplacements. We can see the ready use lockers down at ground level. If we come up to the pedestal where the gun would have been mounted. And this gun would have offered quick firing uh, protection against vessels or small ships that would have tried to land on the beach just behind us. There are a number of these positions around the fort. We have two on this side and then if we go over to the other side and see there's another one over here. So we actually have two. We have one here and one in the far corner. In the distance there is Fort Hayes, the corresponding fort. Uh, Thornton, which we're in at the moment, being the original uh, fort on Ascension, then protecting the, uh, the harbour just in front of us. If we make our way to the main gun position then, We can go around this large firing step which circumvents the inside of the fort and that would have helped the defenders uh, mount an attack with small arms with rifles over the wall uh, to any would-be attackers. Down in the middle here this is the, uh, the access to the subterranean magazines for the main gun which just sits up here, this position. Uh, I think the building behind was the ammunition magazine. So that would have been for testing the, uh, the ammunition. Um, just really, I suppose, to make sure damp hasn't set in and it's, uh, it's still usable. And then behind us, this, this mound in the center of the fort is that original blockhouse, a uh, two-story blockhouse uh, that was constructed and then uh, decapitated as the head the head came off to reduce its height. A number of other interesting uh, features and relics of this, the use as a fort. So down here, there's one on on either side of the gun. These were probably the um, the pillows for the rangefinder, um, possibly a depression rangefinder, um, to to get the range and depression of the gun um, for firing at. Um, at longer range uh, marine targets. And if we come down this side, um, this is, um, this doesn't go down to the magazine. This, this, this is a, a recess, probably for some um, ready use ammunition, possibly, uh, or to store the, the range finders. Here is the shell lift, so this is where the shells were hoisted up from the magazine below before being loaded into the gun. And on this side we have the cartridge lift and when we go down to the magazines we'll, we'll be able to see those from the other side. Now coming up to the steps of the main gun, the position um, is still in position and this this wind is <laughs> is absolutely phenomenal uh, with the steel ties for maneuvering the gun and then we have the large iron pivot in the center And we can really see from here the great vantage point that this fort has. Now, the, in the 19th century, whenever this, whenever this fort was commissioned, um, vessels needed a 
a large draft so they needed deep water to be able to anchor and then raiding parties could come aboard uh, smaller vessels so the large guns like this would engage the uh, the main ships and then the quick firing guns around the outside uh, would engage any vessels that that attempted to land on the beaches and really the only the only part of ascension that was suitable to land is the site of the harbour so harbours played a much more strategic position um, and were often very heavily defended whereas the rest of the island almost lies defenceless So it's possible that this structure here is actually a much earlier battery, perhaps one of the first that was constructed on the island. And there are a number of reasons I think this. One is its position uh, overlooking the large sandy beaches of English Bay. The other is this structure here, which is reminiscent of a powder magazine, or indeed a, a, a water tank. But having a look inside, it looks it looks more like a magazine to me. Built out of the local volcanic stone. So no use of concrete, which was definitely used in the later forts. One end, the other end, we had the entrance. At this end is ventilation. So we can see it's blocked off from direct entry, but left and right of that uh, allows air to flow. Um, it's bounded on all sides by the local stone volcanic uh, wall. And on the outside at the front is a curved stone wall um, curved because of the, the strength and shape that's then been infilled uh, with stone this appears to be um, the surface possibly the original floor level and then i would imagine there would have been uh, one or two muzzle loading guns uh, situated up here to, as i say to protect to protect the bay and this would really have been in the the early days of the occupation and fortification of Ascension in those days um, when it was it was occupied to um, to try and deter the French from um, chasing after and recapturing Napoleon who was interred on the nearby I say nearby St Helena about 800 miles away this this is the nearest landmass um, to that so this may actually be one of the earliest fortifications on ascension. Mm -hmm.